Good evening and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about my solar PV performance for September 2019. I am based in the middle of the UK in the Worcestershire area. I have a 9 kilowatt system with a 6 kilowatt inverter. I also have a My Energy Eddy to divert surplus to heat up water, a My Energy Zappy to charge my electric vehicle, and a Tesla Powerwall 2. Let's roll the intro. So welcome back to the channel. If you've uh, been watching on a regular basis and hello to anyone who is new, as usual, I'm gonna go through a month's solar performance for my kind of nine kilowatt system here. And I know already this month has been a weird month of uh, kind of highs and lows in terms of how much sun and clouds we've had and also I've had to do uh, a fair bit of travel um, which means I've had to charge a car up overnight so I know that my electricity consumption is going to be up uh, compared to normal but it is what it is um, also this would be interesting to see how we compare to last year as well so let's just uh, see if we can get my information up Right, so as always, I talk about kind of what the system is expected to generate and then how we did, and then go through the kind of day by day quickly and uh, talk about general performance. So, for uh, September, the installer of my system estimated I should generate around 800 kilowatt hours. My estimate was a bit lower, uh, around 670 kilowatt hours so normally it's somewhere in the middle so let's say it should be oh seven let's call it about 730 something like that so let's um jump to the screen sharing so you can see what i'm seeing and then we can see how things stack up so just give me a minute so the system actually generated 788.46 kilowatt hours. So that's actually pretty good um, for the month of September, I think. In terms of what I was able to consume myself, I was able to consume 94% of the energy generated, so 739.26 kilowatt hours, and 49.2 kilowatt hours of that were exported. In terms of my total consumption for the month, you can see it was quite large, actually. 1.07 megawatt hours um, and so 69% of that um, obviously came from the solar system but I had to import 0.33 megawatt hours so we can see already from this kind of high level overlay graph that things started off uh, pretty well into the beginning uh, of the month then you can see lots of red spikes where I've had to kind of charge the car uh, a lot in the evening. Um, I think at one point I was I started to heat the water again as well actually. So what I've now done is set up my hot water to also heat uh, from the, the grid in the evening. So as mentioned before, I'm on the Octopus Energy Go tariff. So it's their kind of four hour economy tariff. So from 12.30 midnight to 4.30 a.m. I pay five pence uh, per kilowatt and so I'm using that to charge a power wall up a little bit which is starting to happen towards the end of the month. I've also scheduled I think it's one or two hours um, of boosting the hot water to make sure there's enough hot water because we're just not getting enough sun during the day with the recent trips I've been doing to fully charge the power wall and charge the car as much as I needed and then have anything left for the hot water. So that's why I've kind of switched to that. So you can see already lots of high consumption. If we look down the bottom, we can see that actually September 2019 was marginally better than September 2018. So now we've had a system for over a year. It's interesting to see how things are performing you know, year to year compared to previous. So that, that's pretty good. Right, so let's um, jump into the day by day. So just kind of see how things are performing for something odd stands out so we can see off to a relatively good start on the first day of the month good level of generation um some constant sunshine there from 
8.45 a.m. in the morning all the way through to 10.45, then kind of things go off a little bit, but we have surplus, so everything is right with the world. Move on to the next day. Again, not too bad again. A large amount of surplus for us. Uh, we managed to consume most things throughout the rest of the day. On to the third. Again, never a good day. Not We're seeing already now as we go into the winter months that we're just not getting lots of good sunshine throughout the day, but enough the system has been able to handle itself. Into the fourth. A bit spiky. Obviously lots of um, kind of overcast weather. But the system's done pretty good. We've had a bit of surplus again, so we should be good for into the evening. Fifth is not very good at all. Look how overcast this is. Very roller coastery ride. And uh, yeah, a little bit of surplus though, so not too bad. We did export a little bit on that day. Okay, now we're going to start to get into trouble. So you can see really not good generation. Obviously, we are consuming it all. Um, but you can see they're 14.61 kilowatt hours. So if we were lucky enough to fully charge the power wall, I very much doubt it because with daily consumption, we're going to struggle. So I imagine in the morning now, we're going to see some pull from the grid. Yep, there we go. So this is seven kilowatts. So I must have charged the car uh, at this time. And maybe a little bit of hot water there as it starts to peak off. And then in the morning when kind of I don't know what's going on here, hair dryers and, and whatnot. We're starting to pull from the grid. Um, because obviously the system can't support it, which is a bit sad. And again, another day where we've only um, produced 13.57. So I imagine again in the morning, now some grid pull. Yep, so some grid pull again. Um, both, uh, it's probably a bit of car, a bit of hot water. Uh, yeah, so here, here tends to be power wall on its own. So just kind of, topping itself up but a pretty good generation day so 39.19 kilowatt hours of generation so there shouldn't be too much going on in the morning which is pretty good yep so it's seen us all the way through to eight o'clock but then as we get into the evening weather's pretty bad so when we start to do cooking etc we're pulling from the grid again on to the 10th bit of um charging up in the morning so again this will be a bit of power wall just do some maintenance cycles to get some energy in there. Again, another crappy day, only 18 kilowatt hours. More um, more acti activity in the morning. So seven, I don't think the car would have been doing anything there. It's just for a very short period of time. So maybe there was some, some odd peak that kicked up to seven. That is kind of odd. But again, another poor day. So running out of energy into the afternoon again, into the evening, I should say. So again, we'll be pulling in the morning. Well, yeah, I remember this one. So this is when we had the hot water going, the car was charging because it was uh, it was nearly empty, and um, yeah, power was charging as well. So a massive 70.73 kilowatt hours um, in one day. So that's where you can just see what a massive spike that was. But it's amazing that I can, you know, I can do all this it's only cost me five pence per kilowatt, so it is handy having that Ottawa's Go tariff. Moving on, a little bit of spiking uh, in the morning then. This, again, this will just be the power wall just topping itself up just a little bit and a good day of generation, so 41.74 kilowatt hours. See us all the way through the day. Um, but then again, I think I had to, I had another trip in the car, so I had to charge up. Uh, overnight to get it to where I needed it to be. Hence, you can see about four hours of um, charging from the grid. But then again, another good day generation. So we should be okay in the morning. Yep, no problems. A little weird spike there. Not quite sure what that's about. But again, another reasonable day. So it should be good again here. Good, 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 good. Um, so that, that's not a problem. But we are running out again. So only 10 kilowatts generated in the day, so power will start to run out. And then as kind of things happen in the evening, we uh, need more power. Again here, this will be a bit of power wall. And here will probably be, I'm just trying to think what that is. Hmm, not quite sure. What, what's tend to probably happening here is the power wall knows that electricity is cheaper 
um, at this time. So it's just allowing the pull from the grid to run the house until half past four then switches to the power wall. And um, there was a little weird spike in the morning. Again, this is probably my wife getting up in the morning and kettles and hair dryers and stuff going on. Over to the 18th, pretty solid cracking day, a really nice generation curve. Managed to consume all of it, so this will be the car charging and everything going on there. So hopefully we're okay through into the morning. Yep, a couple of little spikes. Another really good solid day generation. So power will fall, charging the car. Good stuff. A few little blips here. A few little blips here. Um, which aren't too bad. But again, another really good, nice solid generation day there again. At the end of the month looks pretty good. Um, odd spike here um, in the last 30 minutes. I think what this is, this must be when I started to configure the my energy eddy to start charging for an hour or to heat the water for an hour. Um, so yeah, we can see that's working. So again, I know a few, few people have asked about this. If you have a power wall and you've got an eddy and stuff like this, it won't drain the power wall. It shouldn't drain the power wall, I should say, if you've got things configured correctly, because it will realise that the energy from the grid is cheaper um, than the electricity you're going to use in the day, which is what the power wall is there for. Hence, pulling from the grid to charge hot water and do your car, um, that sort of thing. Okay, so we'll just go back. Um, right, so again, solid generation electricity there until the next day pretty poor day and um, so we see right in the, the day we've run out again so 21.30 we're pulling from the grid which means we'll have some more pull in the morning so the power does is weird kind of spikes it we're trying to predict what's happening the next day um yeah it, it struggles a little bit sometimes but in general it does a reasonable job of forecasting and using kind of the previous history to put things out. So 25.63 kilowatt hours on that day. Again, a bit more happening here. So this odd spike in the end here, this is when I'm heating the hot water. Again, poor day, only 10.5 kilowatt hours. So we run out again towards midnight. Again, a bit more charging. So again, these spikes are gonna be quite common now uh, in between um, half three uh, and half four, just where we're heating the hot water. Same again, bit of surplus there, so not a bad day, 25.65, or 26.57 kilowatts even. Again, a bit more, I'm not sure what's, why there's so much peak there, because my uh, water heater is only 3 kilowatts, so I think it's charging the power wall and heating the hot water at the same time there. Another day uh, where I have a trip that uh, I need to do, so I'm gonna be, I was going to be basically leaving my uh, Tesla Model S at the airport, uh, for a week, so I wanted to make sure it had a good level of charge, so Vampire Drain uh, didn't nuke it whilst I was away, which is why we got a big um, draw here, so 60.74 kilowatt hours consumption total that day. And again, a bit more topping up uh, the next day to make sure that the car is definitely ready for that upcoming trip. Uh, and then generation's 14.75, so not brilliant, but gets us where we need to be. And then I think this is the last day of the month. So again, the power wall charging and yeah, a bit more power wall charging and water heating at the same time here. It's that eight kilowatt spike. So it, it tends to be, obviously the water heater is three kilowatts and then the power wall kind of ch normally charges somewhere between four and five uh, kilowatts uh, from the grid, which is why that is like that. And that's it. So that um, brings us to the end of September. So let me just uh, grab my phone and then we can look at some of the other stats for the day, mainly around the Zappi, the Eddy, and a bit of information about the power wall. Okay then, so I know um, because I was away, I couldn't get some really good stats from the Eddy, um, basically because as I mentioned previously, the My Energy app 
sometimes will give you some graphing information about previous months, but it doesn't give you any raw data. So I just get this picture of a graph, which isn't really that helpful for me. But what I did do is look at um, my energy consumption the previous month and then energy consumption for the current month to kind of work out the delta. Uh, so in terms of savings, what it said. So I basically worked out that I had about 56 kilowatt hours of energy going uh, from surplus into hot water. So not too bad, but it's normally much better than that um, during the summer, but not too bad. So I can live with that. Now just uh, give me a second to try and find information for the Zappi, because I took that before I went. Yep, so the Zappi for the month, um, we had a total of 297.48 kilowatt hours of electricity that I put into my Tesla Model S. 48% uh, of that came from the grid and 52% came uh, from solar, which is basically 156.29 kilowatt hours went uh, in from surplus, which I think is pretty damn good. And then somewhere we should have a picture of the Powell. So yeah, so from the Powell, um, I got 308 kilowatt hours of energy from the Powell that I was able to use into the house. Now, as I mentioned previously, Tesla have done something with their app it's basically screwed it up in terms of telling you how much um, you put into the power wall because it's basically saying I only put 12 kilowatt hours into the power wall in a month, which I know is absolute rubbish. Um, so not really that helpful. But yeah, that's how the system has performed for September 2019. Please show me uh, below in the comments how your system has performed. Has it been a, a good month, not a good month? How did it compare to previous years if you've had your solar... Um, over a year and what do you think about the fact that it's getting harder to get good information from apps themselves unless you're here at your house when you want to kind of do some of these updates you can't get access to this information so I can't get access to the MyEnergy app and get proper raw data to help me with these videos or now from the power either the only thing that remains constantly helpful to me is a solar edge app Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.